I always feel that one of the most unhelpful things that Stravinsky said about his music is that he wanted it, the player not to have any of their own personal input into the music. He just wanted it played as by a machine um, without that kind of personal... Um, one of the greatest the difficulties of the solo is simply the way it looks. Um, <clears throat> personally speaking, I've got, much as I like the way it looks on the page, I've got an incredible... I suppose some of it is just famili familiarity because we're not used to dealing with visually with exactly how that looks. Um, but I think it's very important like not to have this kind of residual feeling in the music that somebody's concentrating on playing it terribly well in time. But he it says should. that it's a dual-edged thing because he's terribly worried that whilst it's great for the composer to have it, like this is how I wanted it to be, he's saying that two things. One is that music exists in its own time and should be allowed to reflect. Actually, what makes all those differences is how you treat rhythm, how you treat nuance, how you treat the airstream. That everything is flexible, everything is open to be changing. Um, and I think the worst scenario for a player is because of study and because of feeling the need to be correct, that players then have this dampener on the musicianship. And because the athleticism or kind of balletic quality um, that's there. And between smooth music and rhythmic music, music that's quite rhythmic. There's a fun. nice feeling of kind of rubato and flow about the triplets. And then the fives have a completely different role to my mind. They, they, it's it's really great that you get a triple aspect. Character, you get a real feeling of beautiful tunes and melodies, beautifully played, and then a feeling of um, virtuosity. And it's something about playing that low that it inclines one to drag. Um, so it's very important to keep the flow and the rhythm as well.